and, and um, they, they um, have important parts to, to play in, in the environment. So, all right, so what is an insect? So a lot of times people, you know, just say bugs and they throw spiders in there. So if we look at, um, at uh, let's see, at this spider here, um, spiders are going to have eight legs here, and we have two body symbionts. We got this one in the back and one in the front where kind of the head is. And one thing about spiders, I think most spiders actually have, have um, eight eyes with this interesting things. And then, because people, part of my job, I identify different things people bring me. So they bring me in spiders and I try to identify them. But part of the thing, if you look closely at their eye arrangements, the different sizes and they're on different spots in their head, you can, you can tell what kind of spiders they are. But those are basic kind of things for, for, for spiders. Um, insects, though, we have that insects are always going to have six legs. Insects, they come in all sizes and shapes and everything, and what we'll see. Um, but we've got always six legs, and these have three body segments or body areas we have, and we'll look at those here. All right, so what, we've got the head. And the thorax and abdomen are the three kind of areas here. So the head, obviously we have heads and their thorax, that'd be kind of like the middle part where all the, the legs are attached to and, and the abdomen is there. So they're all gonna, inse adult insects are gonna have all these three body regions and um, the, the, the little ones might not have that. So if you're talking about caterpillars, they won't have these all, but even the little, they all, they'll have six legs. They might look a little different, but um, they're, they're going to have those things. So here's an example here. Here's a, a, a beetle close up. We see um, we've got the head here and then this section here is really easy. We, this is the, the thorax, the middle one, and then the abdomen there. So That's better. That's what I was looking for. Um, <clears throat> so here's another example of a, a different type of insect here, a, a, a wasp. And again, we can see, um, let's try this if, let's see, um, let's try and, and uh, work out something for if you guys want to try and uh, help identify it. So I'm not sure if on your advice, if, if, if you have the, I should have tried this out first, but at the top there's that, on my screen anyway, on my computer, you got a little annotate thing with uh, like a little pen. And if you go up there and you can do, have drawing and then you can draw. So if you wanna try and is, is you guys figure that out? Can you figure out how to draw so you can see? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the, uh, let me do my different color and it's red. So you can, we can circle our head right there. You guys figured anything out about uh, drawing? I'm not sure if they're <laughs> available, but, uh, but then we have our thorax right here and our abdomen. And this one, while I didn't mention with the, with the beetle, some insects have wings and some insects don't. And depending on, on their kind of lifestyle stage and everything, they could have two, two pairs, one pair, or uh, no wings. Um, and they're, all, they're gonna have antennas on their head as well. And it's, we've got a lot of variety of, of different things, uh, shapes and sizes with insects. All right, next one. All right, so I'm not sure if we ever do this, but um, if you guys want to, we talked about what what kind of basic things make an insect. Does is this one we're looking at here? This is a pill bug. Is this an insect? 
who remembers what type of thing, what, what, three, what things we need for insects? You can let me know or I was hoping if you do the, uh, if we have, if it's an insect or insect, do you guys have any idea? What do you guys think? If you don't want to talk, you can always use the chat box where you yeah. can and put it in there. Or there's, I think there's a thing where you can do a, a thumbs up thing. If I don't know about it. What was that? Oh, thumbs up. Okay, you found the, the button. Okay. So you put a thumbs up if you think this one, the pill bug is an insect. Or you can just go like this. <laughs> you think it is an insect? All right. Where we got it? We insects. We have um, six legs, right? Kind of hard to see the legs here, but I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's on one side. So we got a lot more than six legs, and we have don't really have our three body segments. So a pill bug is not an insect, even though we call it a bug. So um, we'll try another one. All right, this one is a praying mantis. Who has seen a praying mantis before? Anybody? Yeah, you have? All right, so who thinks this is an insect? If you put, put up your hand to do a thumbs up button there, uh, is this one an insect? We've got to look for the number of legs and the body parts. So anyone think insect? Yay, I still got one thumbs up. I'm not looking at it, I can't skip back to that. Okay, so anyone think it's a not an insect? Okay, all right, we had one person say, this is an insect, so we, have, we can count our legs. One, two, three, four. These weird things up front where they use to catch bugs and eat them, those are, those are legs too. So they're different type, types of legs, but they are legs. So we got six legs and we got one, two, three uh, body segments, so insect there. Our next one, this is a little blurry here. What about this one? This is a box elder bug. So our pill bug, we said it was not an insect, but let's look at this one here, box elder bug. So who thinks this one's an insect? We gotta count the legs. I think we can see all of them here. Yay, nay, thumbs up for insect. We got one thumbs up for insect. All right, anyone think it's not an insect? Thumbs up for not an insect now. All right, so this, you think, okay, all right. So that's why you gotta, these, these names are, are kind of tricky because it, although there's a box elder bug like our pill bug, this one is an insect. So those common names are kind of tricky and confusing sometimes. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six legs there. We got, these are antennae there. And we got the head and the thorax and our abdomen there. So that's another insect. All right, now this one here, and this is a, a scorpion. Scorpions, are they, they insects or not? Insect, any thumbs up for that? All right, thumbs up for not insects. All right, yep. Yeah. And you see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We got lots of lots of legs here, and um, I think only like two body segments here. So this is these are more closely related to spiders than than insects. So good thing we don't have too many of these in, in Indiana. Although I, I've heard they they have been found. I think they hitched hitched a ride back to Indiana from farther south, but um, we don't have them around here. So. All right, here's another one. Um, this one's kind of hard to see the legs, but this, this one is found in the water. <laughs> if you go out of a lake or a pond, you might see these guys swimming around. Um, who thinks this one's an insect? I, I count at least two legs, but there might be hiding. Insect, thumbs up. <coughs> okay, not insect, thumbs up. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, this one, this one is tricky because I think he's hiding in some of his legs. <coughs> There's a, a diving beetle. So beetles are insects. So we got 
one, two legs. I think those other legs are, are, are hiding somewhere. All right, here's another one. Okay, insect for this one, thumbs up. All right, not an insect, thumbs up. All right, good. This is, we count, we can see all legs. We got eight legs here. This is a tick. Yeah, I hate ticks. <laughs> Uh, find it because that you know if if you haven't had them on you before they'll they'll bite you and they suck your blood. Ugh. Gotta watch out for them. All right. So speaking of that, um, the different types of insects they have different mouth parts or types of mouths that do different things. So they have some insects that have chewing mouth parts, um, and they they. Those would be, we'll look at it individually. They, they could eat plants or stuff like that, or, or other insects. Um, we also have piercing and sucking mouth parts, and uh, we'll look at some of those. They could either be eating on plants or, or us. You all, I'm sure, have had mosquitoes on you, and those are those types of mouth parts. Um, sponge, kind of sponge. We'll look at some of those. It's just kind of like a sponge. It, it'll They'll put it down the thing and, and kind of soak up food that way. And then siphoning. And those would be a long tube like a butterfly. So here's some close up on some chewing mouth parts. Um, so there you can kind of see they're used for ripping and tearing things and, and macerating. So kind of chopping stuff up. So a lot of leaves, if you see holes in your, in your leaves, I don't from there. You see this, this crazy beetle down here. Um, yeah, they don't. They don't use their, their <laughs> those those long things. Those are part of their their mouths, but they're not gonna. They're mainly for show, and they're not for like eating eating your hands or anything. There. So, so here's some examples of of damage on plants. There. So you can see they're eating holes in these in these leaves, and this is from it looks like a broccoli plant from caterpillars. Uh, you see that this this pile of sawdust here. So this next to this tree root, we've got we'll have beetles will go bore into that wood and they'll they'll kind of eat under the bark and they all this this kind of sawdust comes out. So those have that, that chewing mouth parts to chew through the wood. And you see these lines on these leaves? That's called a leaf miner. Those are real tiny little bugs. They go inside the leaf and they kind of eat around. You see these are the paths where they eat. And so they use those chewing mouth parts to to, to do that. Um, they also, with other, you know, bugs eat other things, like other insects eat other insects and other things there. So those are kind of chewing mouth parts as well to chew, they can chew up the other insects. Um, other one, piercing sucking. So there, there's gonna be a, like a long needle and they can, these are for, um, mainly for plants. So things like aphids, leaf hoppers, they'll They'll pierce inside and you know plants need water to grow so they got all the these kind of liquids in there and that's how they feed on them. Um, and uh, so they that's one there but also we talked about mosquitoes they also will have the piercing sucking there but also we have some some other they can eat in some insects, we'll see a picture later, they'll, they'll eat other insects by, they've got these pierce, they'll catch them and pick them with their piercing mouth part and kind of suck out, out their insides. That kind of gross, but that's bugs for you. All right, siphoning. So this is a uh, butterfly. So we can kind of see that it's all rolled up down here and, you know, butterflies, they like, they eat the nectar out of flowers. So they they roll out that proboscis or the the and it goes down into the flower and they can they can get the the nectar out there and so that's how they they eat but um, you guys are familiar with with cat you know the caterpillars they turn into butterflies and all that so the caterpillars so that immature like the babies phase they don't uh, they don't have that mouth part they have those chewing mouth parts because they'll eat eat plants and everything so and then here's kind of our, our spongy mouth part here we've got our, our this is a house fly and they if, if you had 
have a picnic, they like to come and land on your things and they, <laughs> they'll, they'll eat with this spongy, they'll put that mouth part down and kind of pick up things that way. Um, so they like to land on your potato salad and, and take, a, take a bite that way. But an interesting thing here with, with flies, we've got, there's a real good close up picture. We've got our three, three body parts here, one, two, three, and then, then with the wings, flies, the fly family, they only have one pair of, of wings, whereas other insects that have wings will have two pairs. So one thing there. All right, so on those things, the, the thorax, that middle body part, um, we could have wings. So like I said, zero, one, or two pairs. And some of the wings don't look like wings like we saw in the beetles. Uh, that hard outer covering on, on the back of their abdomen, those are actually wings, but they can still they'll unfold them using the fly. So then on the thorax is where the legs are attached. So we're going to have three pairs, but they can appear to have none. So some of them can be tricky to find what their, what their legs are and everything. So again, here's a, a grasshopper, an insect. And um, so here, this part here is, is our abdomen. And here's the thorax part here and then the head. And we've got grasshopper. What do you think, what kind of mouth parts grasshoppers do have? You think they have the, we'll do the thumbs up. You think we have um, um, piercing sucking on grasshoppers? Put a thumbs up if you think that. No, you think they pierce and suck things? Who thinks they got the chewing mouth parts? Thumbs up for that. Who thinks they have siphoning? No, no, okay. They have the chewing mouth parts. You see kind of there that they, grasshoppers, um, they eat plants and they, they chew them up and everything there, so. All right, well, I'm not sure if we'll be able to, I was gonna have, if you guys can't figure out the annotate thing at the no no okay well we'll skip that part then i was gonna have you see if you can draw an insect there so we're gonna we'll, we'll look at some different groups we've got lots of different type i mean what i said we got sixteen thousand species we're just going to look at some different groups here so beetles are a common type of insect we see them a lot of things so this one's a stag beetle and they got those big pinchers um so with the beetles, their life cycle, you know, we talked, you guys are all familiar probably with the butterflies. They start as a caterpillar and they go to the pupae and then they turn into a butterfly. So beetles are similar. They start, but not as cute. Um, so they, they, they'll often be a grub like this. And they look, if you ever dig in the soil in your yard, you might find some of these white grubs and those are just baby beetles, but they'll pupate like a butterfly and then but turn into the adult beetle like this. I did not know that. <laughs> yep. So we've got, yeah, you can see here, we've got the six legs here, and then we have that chewing mouth part. So they, they'll a lot of eat, these a lot of, you know, eat plants and roots and stuff in the soil, or they could be in trees or in other plants there. And some of them eat other insects as well. So, and we've got lots of different types. Um, um, here's a red milkweed beetle, so they they can be pretty pretty kind of red with black dots. So um, lots of different sizes and shapes, and we've got some. You know, I've heard we've got green June beetles around uh, right now, and they can be kind of annoying. <laughs> They're big, they big, green, really. big green beetles that come buzz around, and people get scared about them, but. Um, they last about a week, really, they're, they're out and they eat a little bit and they, they mate and lay eggs and then they die. So that's the, their kind of life cycle there. Any questions on beetles? All right, on to butterflies and moths. So um, you're probably familiar with that. So uh, a lot of things, so here's a caterpillar. This is a swallowtail that some of the, some of these caterpillars are also, they can have lots of different colors and, and um, I don't know, not decorations, but different patterns. So um, with the swallowtail, I've watched, I had some that I watched um, a couple years ago. And first they start out real tiny um, and they'll be kind of black and white and they're, they're 
camouflage. They're camouflaged to look like bird poop. So if you're not really looking really closely, you'd think of a little piece of bird poop on a leaf. And as this species, they grow larger, you see these spots right here? They look kind of like eyes. So they're supposed to look like a snake. And if you kind of get a, a head on view here, I mean, the, the head's here, but it kind of looks like a snake. So it's meant to scare off birds that want to eat it. So, and here's the, here's the stage where it turns into a chrysalis and then these are the adults as well. So um, another, moths are, are similar. Uh, the difference there, um, here's, here's one, a moth I found. This is a luna moth, it's one of the largest moths. And so a lot of times you don't think moths are very pretty, but this is one, one, one example of, of one that, that can be quite, quite pretty and beautiful. Um, but they tend to be fuzzier and they're, they're, the difference is they, they tend to come out at nighttime where the butterflies are during the day, but the, the moths, they'll have their antennae here. You see they're kind of the, the branched and fuzzy, whereas the, our, you can't really see it, but butterflies will just kind of be straight like that. So um, pre pretty similar with the life cycle, they'll have the caterpillars and the pupate and turn into a moth. All right, so here's one, a group. So bees and ants and wasps, they're all kind of in the same insect family. Um, so they're gonna have like these uh, the same, similar body type. Um, and ants sometimes will have wings. So these are, this group of insects we call a social insect. So some of them are, they live together in groups. So, you know, you have an ant colony, I'm sure you've seen that outside, they got the ant hill and they all go inside and they've got different jobs. And, and I'm sure you've heard like with the, the bees, like honeybees, they'll have a, a hive and they've got their queen bee that, and they, they all have jobs there. And it's interesting with, with the honeybees, um, we know a lot about those because they're they're pretty much um, like our honeybees are, are domesticated, so they're pretty like they're like the cows of the insect world for us. So, but we we know a lot about them. So they they start out, um, you know, and lay an egg, and they have other bees that'll come take care of it, feed them, and what the the first and they, they'll have different jobs throughout their life. So the first jobs, they're, they're going to be starting inside the hive and they'll clean out and everything and take care of the larvae and they slowly move, the jobs will change and then they, they, um, the last job is the foraging. So the, the honeybees you see out is that that's their last job and they'll go out and they'll collect pollen and nectar and take that back for their colony for eating. So they, and then after that they die. So they, those, those, those bees have a life, they, they live about maybe 30 days for that. So, but we have lots of different types of bees here, bumblebees. We have solitary bees um, that they don't live, they don't really live by together. Um, I was, but a lot of those, um, yeah. But there, there's wasps as well, they've got similar. Um, and mainly the, we've got, there's social ones, they tend to be territorial, so if you've ever seen like a uh, like a paper wasp, so they'll have their nest and there'll be a bunch of them there. They can be territorial and they can come and sting you. But typically the solitary bees and wasps, they're not territorial. So there'll be one bee or wasp that kind of builds a nest and they, how they, their kind of strategy is that they'll feed the, you know, they'll put a nectar and pollen in this, this the laying egg and put food in there in a capsule like a mud dauber, if you'll see these mud things on the wall, they'll either put um, food in there, it could be an insect too, so like these wasps, will, I've seen them carry off caterpillars and they'll stuff it in there and close it up and the, their babies will come out and eat, eat what's in there and then when they're ready, they, they come out. Um, but this one, this, this wasp here is called a cicada killer. And those guys are big, they get pretty big. Um, the reason they call it cicada killers is they eat cicadas. So that's another type of insect. I, I saw my first one coming out. They come out you know, in the summer, you guys hear them. They make noise at night, they get real noisy. Um, but yeah, these guys will kill them. They'll, they'll take them in, they'll dig holes in the sand and, and they, they bury them in there. Um, they might be scary looking, but unless you try and catch them, they, they don't bother you. 
So I got, I've got them at my house. I haven't seen them quite yet this summer, but um, as long as you, a lot, of, a lot of these, if you leave their nest alone, they won't hurt you, so. Any questions on bees, wasp, ants? No, all right. All right, so we're talking about bugs now. We got true bugs. Um, so if, have you ever seen any, you've probably seen stink bugs. So with the true bugs, they have their mouth parts, they have the piercing sucking. So they, they can feed on plants like these, these stink bugs here, they, they, they suck juices out of plants and that's how they get their food. And so they, they can be a pest. And these especially here, we're getting more and more. These are, these are not native, these, these stink bugs. There's some native ones and some not. But the, the main nuisance for these guys is they want to come inside your house in the winter. And I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want stink bugs in my house at, in, at all. Uh, here's another one. This one is called an assassin bug. And so these eat other insects, um, but they've got that piercing mouth part there where they'll, they'll sneak up on the bugs and stab them with that and they suck out their insides. So we, we talked about the butterflies and moths. They've got the you know, we get you caterpillar or grub and then they pupate and turn into the adults. The true bugs are different. When they hatch out, they, they look like tiny versions of the adult ones. Might have a little different color or what, but they just kind of grow until they, they look like miniature versions of the adults and they'll just kind of grow bigger and bigger until they're adult. So that's kind of different sort of life cycle for, for some insects as well. All right, here's an activity you can do um, um, at home to figure out what kind of, this is a, a pitfall trap. And you can, it's pretty easy to make. Um, you just have to, it's, it's, it's meant to catch bugs that are crawling around on the ground so you know what, what, kind, of, what kind of insects you have there. So you just need a little plastic cup, um, dig a hole and you kind of, Stick one of the little cup in there so that the cup is at is at uh, <clears throat> at uh, the soil level. So as a bug comes along, they can they'll fall into that trap and they get stuck in there. And you can check in there. Um, you might want to. They've got this board here. You can use a rock or something to kind of put a top over it so it's kind of hidden. Um, but that's something you can do if you're curious about insects and what kind of insects you have in your backyard. Uh, you might find beetles or ants in there. You might use a um, a um, kind of a bait, put in some some bread or a little bit, see see what happens there. But a lot of times they'll they can they'll, they'll wander in there. You may a night like a rock or a piece of wood over top makes a nice place for them to want to go hide. So you can do that and check what what kind of bugs you insects you have living in your yard. We've, I've done this in, in some crop fields around here too. Um, so that, that's one thing you can do to, in your yard to kind of, and you can try and I identify what, what types of bugs, and how many beetles you catch or ants or, or other insects you find, or I guess even not, because I'm sure you'll catch spiders in there too. Oh, heck no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, pe people bring me spiders into my, my office. And they're, most of the times I, I let them go, but I, I had uh, twice um, black, black widow spiders brought in, but I don't think I want to let those go. So, so most spiders are, are harmless to you. Well, is it common when people have questions that they bring that type of thing to you? I guess I've never even thought about that. Yep, yep. You've, if you got questions on, you know, what kind of insect or, or People bring what's what's eating my plant or whatever they 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 bring it to the extension office and 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 I, we I figure it out and yeah, someone it was last week someone dropped off a spider that had hitchhiked from Wisconsin their cabin <laughs> and he's like what kind of spider and I'm like oh, I I looked it up and found out what it was it was a a clover orb weaver or something or weaver spider. So those are harmless spiders. They won't bite you. They, they'll eat uh, insects that want to eat stuff in your garden. So I put it out outside in the garden at our office. So 
Can you get off my laptop, Pickle? All right, so that's all. I got one more thing I got to, um, let's see. I wanna show you a video. Um, so this is, if you like gross things. trying to get that video up. There we go. Okay, so, so we have got lots of different insects and insects eat things that we, that we don't want them to eat. So anyone have tomatoes in their garden at home? Anyone tried to grow tomatoes before? Thumbs up? Yeah. Um, ever had a tomato hornworm attack your tomato plants? Like yeah. five or six of them. Yeah, they, they'll eat, they'll, once they get this size, a good big one, they eat a lot. And so they can eat most of your tomato plant very fast. And um, they're also, um, um, other insects like to eat them too. So this is a video looking at, so there's these, we call parasitic wasps. So what happens, these wasps, they'll come and find you, these tomato, these, these caterpillars, and they lay their eggs on, on top of them. And then the eggs hatch and the babies go inside the caterpillar and they kind of eat them from the inside out and then they pop out. So this is a, this is a video of that there. Well, it's the tomato caterpillar turn into beautiful butterflies. Uh, the, the tomato, they're not beautiful butterflies. These have turned into moths. Oh. So here, they're eating that tomato, going to town they can eat a lot. Look at how fast they eat that tomato. Oh no. You can see here, you can see the moving around inside there. Those are those those parasitic wasp larvae, these little white things there. So they're inside eating that and they're popping out here and they're forming a, a cocoon to turn into the adults. So, so yeah, and, they, and eventually they'll, you'll see it turn into a little bitty, little bitty wasp and you don't have to worry about these wasps because they're not going to sting you or anything. Um, they're making the cocoons there. And see they're popping out and see these, how little tiny these wasps are there. So all those little wasps, they ate that caterpillar from the inside out. So if you ever see a caterpillar with, with these sorts of things on it, it can, uh, that's probably what's happening. So they, they cut a hole in their cocoons and then they come out. You can see one here, they're about ready to pop out there. Here it comes, oh, and it's gone. <laughs> There. So just a little bitty tiny wasp. And then they, they're adults, they go find another caterpillar to lay eggs on and continue going. So yeah, there's lots of, lots of different things, you know, we have good bug, well, what we think is good bugs that eat, eat our plants that we like or eat or try to eat us like mosquitoes, but there's also other bugs that eat those bugs. So um, as long as we got things going on most of the times we can keep them keep them in check <laughs> that's all I have um, if you guys have any questions on insects you just let me know and does anybody have any questions or did they learn something they didn't know or I don't know <laughs> well, I know you, you said you didn't know about the, the, the beetles and the larvae how they turned into oh, that yeah. 
I thought whenever I picked up larva, it was just a type of worm or something. Yep. Yeah, those little little grubs and caterpillars, those are all the immature stage and they'll turn into a, the adults. There's some, some that are, look like caterpillars, but they're not really caterpillars or what we call uh, sawflies, which will turn into like wasps instead. How can we identify the larva of a monarch butterfly? Um, they're pretty, they're, I guess the easiest way is to look on milkweed plants. So if you know what milkweed plants, that's where you're going to find them because that's the, the only plant they eat on. Um, but then they're going to have like zebra stripes, so black and white and kind of yellow stripes all, along them. Um, I have, I have not, I've seen the adults this year, but I've been looking at the milkweed around my house. I have not seen any milk and on our caterpillars. When about, is this the right time of year for that or? Yeah, they've, um, I've been seeing the adults for a couple months. So, um, so with the monarch butterflies, interesting though, like a lot of the insects, they, they don't like cold weather. So they'll overwinter as like the larva or something like that. But the monarch butterflies, they fly south to Mexico and they spend the winter in Mexico and then they all fly back all the way north to Canada. It's not going to be the same because as they, as they go north, they stop and lay eggs and I'm not sure if the ones that go into Mexico, I'm not sure, they probably don't make it all the way to Canada, but the next generation, they just kind of keep moving north. And then at a certain point in the summer, they'll, they start moving back south. What's one of the most interesting things someone's brought into the Purdue Extension office to show you? Insect-wise? Yes. Well, the, the, I said the, uh, the, the, the black widows, those are, those are kind of neat as long as they stayed in the jar away from me. Um, yeah, lots, lots of different spiders. There's some nice ones. I, I know some in another office, there's like, I forget, some sort of jack-o'-lantern spider was more orange. And um, so that, that one, I saw a picture of that one. That was really neat. I'm trying to think other insects wise. I think mainly the, the spiders would be interesting, but some, some beetles and, and stuff like that. Yeah, I learned something new today. I mean, I knew that you did all kinds of uh, the trees and, and that type of thing. So when you said you could do the insects, and so you do a lot of them, a lot more than I thought. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> pretty much people got questions, I bring them in. <laughs> if I don't know, I, I can call up a professor down at Purdue campus and we can get things figured out. So. I know the Purdue Extension office, you guys do a lot. You're very versatile on, on many subjects. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they want to know from Phil? No. Well, thank you for joining us. I hope that you uh, learned something today and that uh, you'll continue to do library programs with us. All right. Thanks for, thank thanks for listening, guys. Have a good day.